foundation board members wanted to speak a little bit and say a little something, so I'm going to ask Ed to come up first. I'm walking real slow. <laughs> uh, I was a neighbor of Wilmer Siebert. He was a wonderful man. As a young man, he uh, landed on, in Normandy on D-Day. He'd grown up on a farm. He came back and was looking to buy a farm. He ended up buying Twin Oaks Farm out on Highway 39 when it was the whole farm. And as he was farming, he realized there was a lot of land for sale. And he just kept, he kept buying farm, selling, and then he finally decided to be a broker in Siebert. Siebert Farm Sales it was around for many years. Uh, but he was a, just a good, decent person. Um, he went to St. Mary's Church, St. Mary of the Mac Conception Church in <coughs> Michigan City. And there was a slum landlord who had a property right across from the entrance and the people used to yell and scream and make fun of the people going into the church. So he bought the property, moved them out. And then when we uh, bought the land for the Shoal Center, which is their gymnasium and their student center, he just donated the properties. He said, you know, this is why I bought it. So he's just a good guy. So I'm not surprised he donated land here. Um, he was just a very caring, careful, busy man. He, at one point, he probably owned a lot of property in Lepore County. Um, he bought a, a uh, farm out off 525 where he lived till he passed away. And it was just farmland, so he got on his bulldozer, he dug a couple lakes, he made hills, it looked like a park. So Wilmer was just a great guy, and that's why I want to talk to you about, because most people say, oh, Wilmer, Silver. yeah, I don't know who that is. He was a very decent person. Thank that's you. all I have to say. And uh, Jim, did you want to say something? Jim Jessup. Jim Jessup's a longtime member of our Park Foundation as well. Um, so I'll let Jim talk. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I'm speaking today really on behalf of Stephanie Oberly, who is the current Park Foundation president. She couldn't be here. And so um, uh, I'm taking that duty here. You've met uh, Ed Marion and Liz Kaminsky, another board member is here who else oh and matt our brand new uh board member our brand new uh park foundation board member you'll hear from him in a little bit uh, uh will we hear from him in a little bit yeah, okay good no pressure matt um uh so i i remember over 20 years ago uh i came out here with then park superintendent tim morgan and leon dargis from harbor trust who was a good friend of the Siebert family also, and they were had a good working relationship. And it was through Leon and, C and, and, and Wilmer that the deal kind of happened here, that the uh, land was donated to the Park Foundation, uh, again, a little over 20 years ago. I remember the first time we came out here, uh, we walked the, uh, the area here. It was wild and, and, and nothing here at the time, of course. And I remember the comment from Tim and Leon and myself by saying, wow, this can't be LaPorte County. It looks like Northern Michigan, literally. And so I was just absolutely amazed to see what was out here. And that's before I knew anything about the, 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 the valuable uh, 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 trees and shrubs and, and plants that were out here. Um, and so uh, we, were, we were thrilled to death to be able to say, yes, we will take this property and hold it in the Park Foundation hands until it could be turned over to the park and turned into the park, which we're celebrating today. So that's over 20 years ago where all of that happened. So it is a, a great story about how a donation someday, maybe a long, day, a long time in the future, will become public property owned by the people of Laporte, enjoyed by the people of Laporte County, of course. And so that's a great story that we love to tell through the Park Foundation always, and we've done it many, many times. So uh, welcome. Uh, this is a big day for certainly for our Park Foundation uh, and for the parks and for all the people of Laporte County. Welcome and enjoy the park. And I, I wanted to say when I when I first came here about almost eight years ago, we you know we started uh, you know I was a little overwhelming coming into a new parks department and being you know the superintendent. But a couple years after I came in, you know it was brought up in, in at a foundation meeting, and, and, and I remember Jim saying, 
you know, if we're not going to do anything with that property, maybe we should look at, you know, giving it to somebody else or somebody that can open it. And, and I, I think that was his gentle nudge to me to say, what are you doing? What are we going to do with this? You know, so I said, well, let me look at it. And when I came out here, I had the same kind of um, reaction that, that Jim did the first time. It was like, wow, you know, this needs to be our next part. But what that looks like is, is kind of hard because when you look at all of our other county parks, they're very developed, they're very, um, you know, buildings and, and playgrounds and things like that, but not every park has to be that. And I think that's where, where this park fits into our, our park system. So um, I think the last foundation member um, that wants to talk is, is Matt, and I'll let him uh, um, tell a little bit about himself and, and why this is special to him. So, Don't mind me, I'm not much of a public speaker, but uh, <laughs> my name is Matt Siebert, so I'm here on two different levels. Um, a recent LaPorte County Park uh, Foundation board member. Um, I have not attended a meeting yet, but uh, I'm very excited for that. Um, and also, of course, my last name being Siebert. Um, Wilmer was my dad's uncle, so it would be my great uncle. Um, I believe he donated the property in 2000, mm -hmm. and you know he just knew this was a wonderful <laughs> spot to preserve and you know for everybody to enjoy. Um, Wilmer passed away in 2004, I believe, yeah. and. You know, I, I'm sure he's looking down now and got a smile on his face. So, um, great work, everybody involved. I appreciate everything. Um, the Siebert family is very, very happy. Thank you. Thanks, thanks everybody. Did any other, other members, your, your cup's leaking there. <laughs> <laughs> the lid's not on. Mine did the, mine did the same thing. <laughs> you can see it. Um, thanks, every, I, and I do want to really thank everybody for coming. You know, I, you never know how many people are going to come to to a dedication or, or anything like this, but this is a really good turnout. Um, you know, like like I said, you know, this was donated in 2000, and it, and it took a long time for it to really get 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 to this point. You know, and it. it it's not like it was being developed since 2000 you know this was sitting in a natural state um you know some people were were using it as a as their own little hiking you know neighbors would come in and things like that and and that's understandable and that's uh and and, and now though i think wilmer and his his wife ruth who passed ruth right i think passed away quite a while before he did but uh, i think you know they when he donated it, I think it was, it, the, the whole idea was to make it accessible to the public, right? It, it wasn't just, he wanted to donate it just to, to make it, keep it away from everybody. He wanted people to be able to enjoy this property like like they enjoy our other parks. So um, I, this is a, it's a big day for our parks department. Um, and, 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 uh, and as Jim said, our foundation, because I think this is what the foundation wanted all along was this to make it open to the public. Um, support you know we've had support from um, uh, obviously our park board uh, Jim Hollifield's here from our park board um, and from the county council and commissioners you know we couldn't have, we couldn't have opened this if they would have said you know we don't really need another park or we don't want any more money being spent you know on, on anything like that but but lately we've had really really good support from um, the county council and commissioners um, the highway department came and, and kind of helped us level this off and clear this area was always kind of a little lane and access area but um from years ago but but they were able to make it to where you could actually get a car in here the sheriff's department is always helping us out with uh, uh things in the park so and and they'll they'll be involved by driving by and making sure nothing's you know ha you know because this is not a park we're going to have somebody at every day obviously there wouldn't be a whole lot for them to do that's the, the beauty of this park for our department is that it's not going to cost us thousands and thousands of dollars to operate every year. Um, and then the people of Laporte County, I mean, we, we, we have some of the, we have unfortunate things happen to our parks, in our parks, 
uh, you know, we had, had today was supposed to be Pioneer Days. You know, we had to cancel that because of low staffing and stuff like that. And the, the response we got from the community was more, you know, sorry to hear that you're, you know, instead of complaining, which is very easy to do, they, they, they told us they understood and, and hope to have the event back next year. So I, I think that just shows how much support we have in the community and, and things like that. Um, I kind of already said that many of our parks, we provide all kinds of activities for people to do, but this one is going to be special in its own way and that um, people can come here anytime, just like our other parks, but, but hike it on their own. We're gonna, we hope to have some more signage coming in the future. Um, as far as interpretive stuff and to explain a little bit more about Wilmer and the, and the, the donation to the Parks Department. And um, uh, lastly, I wanted to introduce Derek from the DNR uh, State Nature Preserves and he's going to lead us on a hike if you want to go on a hike. Jeremy, maybe if he wants to how say about Dennis want to say something about Wintergreen? Okay, yeah. sure, sure. Wanna... Uh, if you want to say Since anything right about here, Winter Green okay, Woods, I'll just say a couple promoted. words. Uh, before Derek gets yeah, up there okay. and takes all the... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. I'm with the uh, Fort County Conservation Trust, and we own Winter Green Woods, which is across the road here. It's 23 acres, uh, and there's, there are some trails in there, and, uh, you know, it'll be, um, uh, it'll be nice to have two parks next to each other. I mean, this would be a place we can park and everything, so we don't have any parking over there. But uh, we've, we've had that since like 1998, I believe. So uh, uh, the two parks can work together and uh, they'll be um, beneficial for wildlife and the, the uh, flora. So we're happy to have the, the county park next to it. Yeah. Good partner. Yeah. 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 yeah, That's and that's great. That's something I even, all along, Sorry, I know. Uh, all along, you know, we knew this this property was basically public. Open, to, it's private, but it's open to the public, right? Yeah, you know, we you can, people can you can park can, along the road. You can go back and walk around, and of course, just be uh, a good steward. So yeah. no trash or anything Carry like that. But I think we haven't had any problem. Here. Yeah, it, it's similar to this park. It's it's basically a nature area, and, and to, it's a nature preserve as well. Yeah, it's a dedicated state yeah. nature preserve, but. So, Derek would have an interest in that. So even yeah. though this is only a half a mile, what do you have over there? Maybe close to a half mile? Yeah. You the know, so so you, could, you could combine the two properties yeah. and make a little bit longer hike and maybe see a little more different wild, or, you know, a little more wildlife or whatever. Yeah. So, um, but thank you for that. Um, and all along, we've, we've always said, like, they don't have any parking or much parking yeah. other than right on the road. So this was kind of the idea was that they could use our parking yeah. area as well. So. All right, so uh, lastly, again, Derek from the uh, Division of Nature Earth. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so my name is Derek Nimitz, and I work for the Indiana Department of Natural Resources Division of Nature Reserves. And all the presentations, the, the people talking before you, there are common themes. I hear things like partnerships. I hear things like community. Uh, I hear things like kindness, such as donations of land and working together. Um, this is an amazing day. I'm so happy to see you all, but the reason why Winter Green Woods Nature Preserve across the street and Siebert Woods Nature Preserve or County Park, which we're here at today to celebrate, is because they have these amazing high natural resource values. Uh, so when I look at the entire state of Indiana, there are these natural communities. We know them as things like prairies, forests, and wetlands. Here, in this portion of LaPorte County, we have something called the Northern Boreal Flatwoods Natural Community. So you have heard, all oh, this looks like Northern Michigan, and it feels like Michigan when you're out here hiking. That is a unique natural community type that occurs only in LaPorte County in the state of Indiana. So that in itself, a rare community, is one of the reasons why it's protected in perpetuity. The Indiana Department of Natural Resources works with our partner organizations, and we have protected across the entire state of Indiana more than 295 dedicated nature preserves. This is a layer of protection the state of Indiana puts on land and wetlands um, to protect it in perpetuity, forever and ever. And regional ecologists like myself get to work with amazing, amazing conservationists uh, to protect and manage these high quality natural resources. Um, 
this property in particular was, had a floristic inventory done back in the early 2000s, maybe 2004, uh, where Scott Nobstinick, who is our current state botanist, along with Keith Board, a very well um, uh, known uh, botanist in the area, documented well over 10 rare threatened and endangered plant species out here on this property. And we will see some of those today. Um, the site has a combination of shrub swamp wetlands, flatwoods. It had past disturbance, sand mining and ditches where we're along here today. We're in a little bit of a drought, so we won't be getting our feet wet. Um, but I also have some thanks. I want to say thank you to you all for being here today. Thank you for the LaPorte County uh, uh, Parks Foundation, who had worked with our dedication process last year in 2021. Uh, thank you to, to Jeremy Sobecki and the staff at LaPorte County Parks uh, Department who installed the trails, the signs, the parking lots that we're going to see today. They did an amazing job. Um, I see fingers back there, and so thank you to you all. Uh, but I also want to thank Jesse Parsons. Jesse Parsons, who's back here in the, the brim hat, he works for the Division of Nature Reserves as a, as a steward. And we work together doing things like trash abatement along the roadsides on these parks doing some trail maintenance uh, when we visit the area. So not only is there gonna be, this is a park that may not see as much visitation as Red Mill County Park, um, just know that the Department of Natural Resources invested in your all's community here um, in perpetuity moving forward where we can help and work together. So with that, we have a, a large group of people is it okay to go ahead and, and yeah. start the hike? Yep. Um, I will introduce, this is my son, Harrison Nimitz. He's here, uh, he's my helper, and he comes on hikes with me uh, on weekends. Uh, uh, we love each other dearly. But uh, uh, he pointed out somewhere in the middle of the gravel is a yellow caterpillar, a dagger moth. So he has a keen eye, even though we are still here in the parking lot, it doesn't take us long to find our natural resources. And so I give Harrison the credit for that. Um, we live at Moraine Nature Preserve where we get to see wildlife on a daily basis. And now you all get to enjoy it. Should we move him? Should we move him? So with that, when we go on this hike, uh, I have a tendency to kind of increase my volume. If you have questions, stop and ask. There will be points where I'll stop along the trail and try to point some things out to folks. Um, for the people that is here right now, standing in the parking lot, we have things like uh, uh, red maple is a common tree species. We have things like sassafras trees as well. Some folks think of sassafras as a head high shrub in savannas, but they can be forest trees. Um, before we get started, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> 